God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I'm Minister Billy Burton and welcome to our new teaching series called Understanding the Tithe. For a long time now, there has been a need and a demand for this type of teaching, and it is my humble prayer that what you get out of these lessons will be the word from the Lord that you've been asking and praying for, that feeds your spirit, frees your soul, and brings you into maturity concerning the will of God and the tithe. This series is brought to you by Inspirational Minutes Ministries International, Healthy Java Talk, and those of you who faithfully support our ministry work with your contributions and your prayers. We have every intention of reaching you right where you are, and we ask that you share our lessons so that they can help as many people as possible. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook where you can listen to and read these lessons at a time that's best for you. Our Facebook link is conveniently posted below. Our background music, Tucked in Bed, is composed and performed by J. Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. First, let's pray, and then we'll get right into this lesson of Understanding the Tithe. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy your grace and your love toward us. I thank you for blessing us, Lord, with this series of Understanding the Tithe. I thank you for letting us know how important it is to you, but how it also is important to us. I thank you, Lord, for using me and for teaching me so that I can bring what you once said to your people. In the name of Jesus the Christ, Amen. This teaching series, Understanding the Tithe, deals with God's economics, the way God's kingdom operates concerning the tithe, what to expect and what to look for, how to recognize God's blessings from the world's tricks, and how to receive what God has already sent you to the fullest. Whether you choose to tithe or not, you're learning how the tithe functions. You are receiving secrets, revelation knowledge, and inside information about financial history and how God operates outside of the manipulations of the world's systems. My assignment is to expose hidden benefits and traps so that you have a clear picture of what's available to you and so that you'll be stronger and wiser in your faith. That is why this series is being taught. Economics is the area of knowledge concerned with producing goods and services, buying wants, selling needs, and the transfer of wealth and privilege. Economics involves mental, physical, material, and even spiritual prosperity. In the Bible, Jesus said that he is the door and that if anyone comes in through him, meaning surrenders and commits their life and will to God's kingdom way of doing things, that person shall be saved. He then makes it clear that the spirit of Satan has a three purpose approach and nothing more. He doesn't come to you to be your friend or to tell you about the latest thing that will improve your life and well-being. Satan is referred to as a thief and when he does come, it's to steal, kill, and destroy. My younger brother and I are both grown men now, and he can handle himself quite well. He's probably forgotten all about this incident, so I'm sure that he won't mind me sharing it. 
Many years ago, when we were probably around our late teens or early twenties, I remember coming home from work or wherever I had been and heard the exciting news that my brother had bought himself a brand new top of the line boombox with all of the fancy extras. Cool. I wanted to see it. I immediately began to notice that neither my brother or my mother was smiling, nor anyone else in the house for that matter. In fact, something seemed wrong. What should have been a time of joy was overshadowed by something else going on, which I was about to find out. I didn't ignore the atmosphere and the mood that was there. I wasn't in denial or blind to it either. I just figured that whatever it was that had dampened the moment would be revealed to me. But first, I wanted to see what my brother had worked so hard for and spent his money on, so that I could check it out and congratulate him. As I stuck my head into the dining room from the kitchen, looking to see if it was on the table, I heard my mother say, he was robbed. That got my attention immediately. I asked, who got robbed? And she said, your brother. Your brother got robbed. And they took his brand new boombox. I asked when, where, who? Did you recognize any of them? As I stood there listening, I was told how the whole thing went down. I'm going to continue the story, but I pray that your heart and mind are prepared for episode number 56 of Understanding the Tide. The title of this lesson is Salvation of the Tithe. Your scriptures are Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30, Proverbs 18 and 21, Luke 19 and 10, John 8 and 36, and John 10 and 10. Again, your scriptures are the book of Leviticus, chapter 27, verse 30. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21. The gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse 10. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 36 and the Gospel of John chapter 10 verse 10. I won't bore you with the details of how my brother was relieved of his property, but I will tell you the end result. It just so happened that my brother recognized the guy who had his boombox, knew where he lived, and word was that it was still in his possession. I figured if there was any chance of getting it back in one piece, we'd better move fast before the guy sold it or traded it off for something else. We actually went to the guy's house and lo and behold, there he was sitting on the front porch with the boombox. I have to be honest, I believed it was worth a try to go after it, but I really didn't think that the guy would be that stupid or bold enough to actually admit that he had it. Yet there he was, listening to music as if the equipment was his. He was so relaxed until he didn't even see us coming, so by the time that we were in front of his house. He wasn't able to lie and say that he didn't have it. 
the best he would have been able to do is run into the house. He was shocked to see us. I looked at my brother and asked, is that the guy? He said, yep, that's him. Then I asked, is that your boom box? He looked at me and said, yep, that's mine. Remember, I hadn't seen it yet, so I was going to have to take his word for it, but I had no doubt that he would recognize his brand new boom box. The guy tried to put on a tough face. I guess that was supposed to scare us, but it didn't work. I was on a mission, and the mission was to come back with the boom box, if at all possible. I looked at the guy and then looked at my brother and said, go get your boom box. The guy pulled it closer to him as though he wasn't going to give it up. And for a brief moment, my brother paused. I looked at him again and said, go get your boom box. With confidence, he went and snatched it right out of the guy's arms. Then the young man began to talk trash. Take it. I didn't really want it anyway. You can have it. It's a piece of garbage. All of which was a lie. It was actually a really nice, pretty expensive combination radio and cassette player with all kinds of extra amenities. The only true thing that the thief said was take it, which is exactly what my brother did. He took it back. I could have walked over to the porch and taken it from the guy myself, but it was more important to me that my brother take back what was taken from him. My job was to give him the opportunity to do it and to be there to back him up if it was necessary. An act of deliverance took place that evening. Hearts were lifted. I, as big brother, went to seek and to save that which was lost. What was once stolen and in the hands of the enemy was now in the rightful possession of its owner. We returned home with the prize and the whole atmosphere changed. There was joy again and smiles in the room. Relief immediately filled the house. On a much larger scale, this is the kind of work that Jesus did for us. He came to seek and to save that which was lost, and he found what he was looking for. Big Brother came to take back those things that the thief stole from us. And all we have to do is be obedient and grab possession of what's rightfully ours by snatching it out of the arms of the enemy. In Genesis, Adam literally handed dominion of the earth over to Satan through his disobedience to God. Eve believes the word of the serpent over her husband, and together they caused much to be lost. The ten blessing benefits of the tithe was among those things. But more important than that was the loss of the relationship of trust between God and his creation, man. They were showing God that his word was in question. God's word should never be in question. Deliverance or salvation is about moving something from one place and taking it safely and whole to somewhere else. Did you know that there is a type of salvation built right into the system of the tithe? 
Of course it would be. After all, the tithe is holy and it belongs to God. The tithe is God's word and in his word there is salvation. It's important to be taught about God's kingdom and the system of the tithe. But the challenge is that these things take time and people are very impatient. The tithe even has the power to teach you about itself. Man has a number of systems, all of which are guessing games with limited temporary outcomes. We go to man's schools for two, four, six, sometimes ten years of our lives without a single complaint, re-enrolling if we think that the time spent so far is not enough. And we get no guarantees that our higher learning will reward us with anything. However, when God moves in our lives and begins to train us for six months or a year for something that he knows we're going to do and need to be good at, we complain the whole time. Man can't restore what Adam lost, yet we put a whole lot of trust in what man says. Know that you can trust God's word and thank God for that which was lost being given back to you. It's a form of restoration, a type of freedom, a type of salvation. There is joy within God's word and there is also freedom of joy when you know that there are options other than what man offers especially if you decide to take them. Understand this. The tithe is a seed, time, and harvest system. And as long as the earth remains, these types of systems will work. They work so well until God himself commanded his servants throughout time to destroy evil nations just so that they wouldn't have evil offspring born into the world through human seed, time, and harvest. Everything that you do or say is subject to these laws. Even the power of life and death. Speaking something is a seed. Give it some time and then watch the results or harvest of what you said start to come forth in your life. By now you know that salvation is something that everybody needs. If you would like to claim Jesus the Christ as your Lord, Savior, and King, please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, according to your word in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, I trust and believe with all my heart that I can only be saved by grace through faith. I thank you for the work that your son Jesus did on the cross on my behalf and in my stead. And according to your word in Romans 10, 8 through 15, I confess with my own mouth that Jesus the Christ is the son of the one and only true and living God. And I accept him as my Lord, Savior, and King. I thank you, Lord, for salvation and deliverance of every kind. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. We hope that what we've just fed you has filled your spiritual belly. If you would like to donate and support our ministry and work, please send your contributions through our PayPal. The link is listed below. All gifts are greatly appreciated, and there is no gift too small to matter. We're not asking that you donate to receive this teaching series. You're already receiving that for free. What we do ask is that you consider our honor system. 
If our teachings have helped you in any way, or if you'd like to support our upcoming book series called When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills, please give through our PayPal account at Healthy Java Talk. The link is listed below. We welcome your gift of any amount. Make sure to watch for the release of my book series, When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills. Remember to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notices when we post new lessons. Come back and join us here again next time, God willing, for another lesson of Understanding the Tithe. Our background music, You On My Mind, was composed and performed by Jay Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. God bless you.